Welcome to Electron Turn Line, and just to make sure we understand what a reactance impedance is, we'll do a little video here and explain exactly how to calculate the reactance and impedance of a circuit. So here again we have what we call an RCL circuit. We have an inductor, we have a resistor, we have a capacitor, and we have an oscillating voltage supply. Let's say we have 100 volts RMS, and the frequency of oscillation is 60 hertz, 60 cycles per second, which is what we get out of our wall sockets here. So, what is the opposition to the current for the inductor and for the capacitor? Well, we'll call that reactance. The units for reactance is ohms, just like for resistance. Let's say our resistor is a 100 ohm resistor. What is the opposition to the current in terms of ohms for the inductor and the capacitor? Well, to find that, we use the equation X sub L, which is the reactance of the inductor, is equal to 2 pi F times the inductance of the inductor. Well, sometimes we can write the oscillation frequency of the voltage source in terms of radians per second, the angle of frequency. So 2 pi times 60 converts to 377 radians per second. So sometimes we can also, instead of writing 2 pi f l, we can write it as omega l, where omega is simply the radial frequency of the oscillations. So in this case, in our example, that would be 2 pi times 60 hertz from here times the inductance which is 0.5 Henry's and so that gives us an inductive reactance of so it would be 2 times pi times 60 times 0.5 that gives us 188.5 188.50 ohms I'm going to add a few extra significant figure, so to speak, a few extra decimal places so we can do some calculations later a little bit more accurately. So you can see here that the opposition to current for an inductor is almost twice the opposition for the resistor. Again, that only has the opposition to the induct the opposition to current here because the current will be changing. Once the current becomes steady state, the inductor would offer no resistance to the circuit. So this would be 188.50 ohms. All right, how about the capacitor? Well, the equation for that is 1 divided by 2 pi fc. So you see there's a lot of similarities between those two equations, except for the capacitor, it's in the denominator, for the inductor, it's the numerator, and of course, it's the inductance versus capacitance. So this can also be written as 1 over omega times f. So this would be 1 divided by 2 pi times the frequency, which is again 60 hertz, times the capacitance, which is 10 times 10 to the minus 6 ferrets, because that's 10 microfarads is 10 to times 10 to the minus 6 ferrets. So what is that equal to? So 2 times pi times 60 times 10 e to the 6 minus equals, take the inverse, and we get 265.26. So it would be 265.26 ohms. And we put that in here, the capacitor reacts is 200 and 65.26 ohms. Notice that in this particular circuit, in this example, the capacitor reactance is bigger than the inductive reactance. So the capacitor will overpower the inductor and the whole circuit will act more like a capacitor circuit instead of inductive circuit. Since in a capacitor circuit, the current leads the voltage, in this whole circuit the current will be ahead of the voltage by some phase angle and we'll show you later how to find that phase angle. All right, next what we're going to do is we find the total reactance. And so in this case, the total reactance, X, will be equal to the inductive reactance of 188.50 ohms minus the capacitor reactance, which is 265.26 ohms. And let's see here, that would be, uh, just to make sure, don't make an error here, let me just use a calculator. 188.5 minus 265.26 and that's 76.76 .76 ohms a minus 76.76 ohms now again what we need to do is we need to put absolute value signs around it because even though we get a negative value there's no such thing as negative uh, uh, negative resistance or negative reactance there's always reactance to or opposition to the current so we realized though since we got a negative value since x sub c was bigger than x sub l we know that this is going to have capacitive properties more so than inductive properties finally 
we're going to find the impedance, the total opposition to the current by the whole circuit. We use Pythagorean theorem for that. That would be equal to the reactance, which is 76.76 .76 ohm squared plus the resistance squared. And that will give us the total. So here we square that plus 200 squared equals, take the square root, and we get 214.22 ohms. So that would be 214.22 ohms, and that would be the total opposition to the circuit, uh, current, to the current in the circuit, which is called the impedance. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and show you how to draw that out on a phase diagram, but for now, we just want to make sure that you can take an example like this and find in these the reactances of the inductor to capacitor, mix that in with the resistance, and then find the total impedance of the circuit. That's important, we know how to do that. And then on the next video, we'll take the same example and we'll show you how to draw the phase diagram for that. So stay tuned if you're still interested.